what I'd like to talk about now is how we make multiple selections of objects. If I was to just normally click on an object, you can see that I can jump from one object to another. Now, that's fine. That's all very well and good. But what happens when I want to select more than one object? Let's say, for example, I want to select all of these teapots that are on the ground plane here. So just move ourselves into position there. And I want to move them around as sort of a group. It's going to be a little bit difficult if I have to sort of move them and move one and then select another one and move that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press control with this selected, with my selection tool or select object tool uh, enabled. Press control and then just left click on all of these. And you can see there that I've now got all of those selected. I can go to my move tool and I can move them around within my scene or I could rotate them as a group if I wanted to. And um, because of various settings that we'll talk about later, that's rotating around from the center of the, that group. And then when I want to deselect, I'll just click in a little bit of space over here. So that's really, really useful. So that's one way that we can select multiple objects is by clicking, let's just press Q there, um, by clicking, holding the control key down and doing multiple clicks at the same time and then deselecting. But there is another way, and you'll notice here that I've got this rectangular selection region enabled up here. And what that means is that I've got this marquee tool, which is just really just a rectangle. And I can select an object not just by clicking here, but also by doing a marquee region. Now you'll notice that this marquee is only intersecting the backdrop. You can see it just here, and it's just intersecting that backdrop. And when I let go, the whole of that backdrop is selected. Or if I left click and I do a region now, I'm selecting these two objects and the backdrop because they were all inside of that selection region. Now I may or may not want that to happen. What happens if I don't want that to happen? What happens if I want to select just a couple of teapots just here, just these two teapots? Well, I've also got the backdrop, so that's not much good to me and I can't really press control and deselect that face either. So it's not really much use to me there. What I can do, however, is I can press this button here, which is the window crossing mode. And you can see that as I press it, we go from a marquee region that's got the window crossing there, and then the box or the object is inside the marquee. So that should kind of be a fairly clear indication to you of what's going to happen now. Now if I left click and I drag and I let go, Although this was highlighted, the backdrop was highlighted to begin with, in actual fact, it's only these four teapots that were inside that marquee selection that are actually selected. I'll deselect and do that again. If I want to get just these two, I can marquee select. There you go. And it's just those two objects that are selected. If I marquee select everything, what I'm going to get is, I, and I pull out here, if I were to move these objects around is I've also got my camera target and my light target as well so you can also see the camera and the light there moving at the same time Here we go and I'll undo that and then I'll come back in a little way again so that's very useful and it's a good one to remember because it can help you quite a bit as you're, as you're sort of working through what you're doing as well as my rectangular selection I've also got a whole set of selection tools here which are circular, uh, a polygon region tool, I've got like a free selection, and I've also got a spray can selection. Now these are probably best shown and best used when you've got, um, I, I would say, sort of a sub-selection, so when I'm selecting polygons within an object. So to help us understand this a little bit better, I'm going to select the teapot here, I'm going to right click on it, come out, right click, uh, there we go, that's my uh, viewport playing up here. And I'll go to Isolate Selection, and I'll move this dialog box out of the way. And I'll zoom in a little way onto my teapot here. And I'll up the number of segments to maybe 12. And then I'll right-click on it, and I'll convert it to an editable polygon. So now I've got a completely different type of object here. This isn't a teapot anymore, it's just a collection of faces. And I want to select faces within that. So I could do my single selection and you can see there that the face itself has gone red. Or I can do my 
control click if I want specific individual faces just say these uh, these uh, sort of six or twelve and I can even if I come back up here to my marquee selection I can even do a selection of a marquee there and of course you run the danger of missing one out uh, if I do my include only then you'll notice that I only get the ones that are inside that box but I've also got these other ones that I wanted to talk about so I have a, a circular selection so as I left click and I pull out only things that were included within that so again I'll change my selection type and you can see that we've got a larger circular selection going on if I change this and I make this the polygon or fence selection what I can do with that is I can literally just left click and as I left click hopefully you'll see if I go outside of the object I'm getting this kind of this fence selection in there and I right click oh there we go shouldn't have done that you need to kind of come back to where you were you need to actually close it and you can see here that I know I've closed it because the the cursor has changed and that's what I didn't do before so I'll left click there and there you can see I've got that whole sort of fence selection there moving one down what we've got here is our lasso selection and what I'll do with that is I'll left click and I'll drag and you can see here I can drag out a weird and wobbly wonderful shape and I come back to where I started and then that's what I had selected so if I do that within the object I'll just select there you can see I've got this sort of this random kind of slight cloud shape one other selection type that I really do like and, and I think this is this is one of all of them you'll probably use the paint selection and the marquee selection the most and with this one I can left click and you can see I've got a little circle there and as I drag I've got this interactive selection so what I can do is I can just sort of come in here and I can paint my selection and that's really really useful and we use that a lot as well or this selection method type when you're doing uh, animation and you're skinning and rigging characters it's, it's incredibly useful come away over there I can just do a little bit over here I can press control I can do a little bit over there I can press control I can do a little bit over there and if I press F4 to sort of take off my wireframe to see this a bit better you can see that I've got these sort of these three regions that I've selected using the paint selection region there very useful very very handy it's something that I would say you will use a lot of if I exit that isolation mode now you can see that we've got that selected in there uh, we've also selected a little bit on the back side of the object but we'll talk a bit, a bit, bit more about how to get rid of that and not do that later on but really that's how we sort of we create uh, multiple selections of our objects if I zoom there and then come back out so that's using sort of multiple selections and the different types I can use these on the objects themselves so for example if I did a free selection and I said include just the objects within that selection mode and we back up on object here I'll deselect everything and I draw my region I can now sort of very carefully take maybe just these objects and you can see indeed just those objects were selected I can do the same for my circular selection tool there you go and for the fence selection where I'm doing just a few more clicks there you go so it's not just about sort of a sub object selection uh, it's also about the object selection as well and of course uh, just to finish that here's my spray selection you know that's not really going to work so well it's going to be the first thing that you click because obviously you've only got a, a circle so in this case the paint selection is best for a sub object mode the fence or the marquee select you can use for anything and these three can be used for whichever selection type you want, whether it's object or whether it's sub-object.